Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this morning's study. Um, before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the time that we have here this morning uh, to open your word together uh, to finish off the lines of Samson. And we just ask for your Holy Spirit to speak to our hearts, help us to understand the things that we are studying and to prepare these things for the camp meeting. I pray that you can be with each person as they study on their own. Help us to understand your word. We pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> well, good morning again. Um, just a couple of things uh, before we go back to the whole line of Samson. Now, this is the line of Manoah that's in front of you. And what we had done is we had drawn out these lines of Samson, and then we looked at this beginning of this line of Samson. We saw that there was a line of Manoah. And uh, we used all kinds of symbols that were in here to establish this line. And one of the symbols that we used was we took the name of Manoah, which means rest, and we subtracted from it 777 days. And we got this symbol 3718, which we looked at and we said, is this July 18, 2023, or is it July 18, 2030? Now, in applying it to July 18, 2030 and looking at the 40 years of Philistine oppression, we could see that um, we could count 40 years and 252 days from November 9th, 1989 to January or to July 18, 2030. I also noticed this morning that if I took the period of the manna, so the 40 years that the manna falls is 40 years on a biblical calendar, less one lunar month. So that's 114,588 days. That's the period of the manna. And if I add 273 to that, it's also the same period. So the one is 40 solar years and 252 days. The other is 40 years less a month plus 273 days. And both of them produce the same uh, period of time. So I thought that was rather interesting. <clears throat> okay, so um, we know now that, that Samson is the third angel arriving in January 11th, 2023. And we had drawn some lines of Samson, uh, such as this one, uh, that um, on the bottom, that this line incorporated some of the verses, but not all of them. And um, we talked about how each of these way marks is a different section. So that is the four chapters of Samson comprise seven way marks. And then um, we looked at Samson and Delilah as a, and this is what we did yesterday, and, and I finished some of it off here. So we're going to look at this. So this would be a zoom into the line of Samson that we haven't drawn yet. So in this line of Samson, this is going to be a zoom into uh, one of these waymarks, either the third angel arriving or the fourth angel arriving. I think it's the fourth angel arriving. That So in the line of Samson, we have all of these chapters. So the fourth angel arriving is Samson and Delilah. And um, or maybe that's going to be the death of Sam. I mean, the Samson and Delilah is the third angel arriving. The death of Samson is the fourth angel arriving. Um, I think we haven't drawn that line yet. Um, so in this line of Samson, so just to kind of review really quickly, we know his name means sunshine. Um, the Hebrew number 8123 uh, is, is the name, the meaning of his name is, is marked by that. Um, if we take uh, the regular gematria, the sum is 81. And if we do the reverse gematria, the sum is also 81. So something very highly unlikely. In chapter 16, verse 22, where it refers to his hair, 
That's the Hebrew number 8181. So we can see that that 81, which is also a symbol of midnight and it's doubled, uh, shows that that story there uh, refers to uh, midnight or the midnight cry. Delilah means feeble and her number is a symbol of July 18. It's 1807. So the 18th day of the seventh month. And she's from the valley of Sorek. And Sorek has two different Hebrew numbers in Strong's Concordance with the same word, which is something I've never seen before. And it means choice vine. And the difference between those two numbers is 525. And so we've said that this line of Samson and Delilah in relationship to this issue with these three plus one events, that is the seven green widths, the new ropes, the seven locks woven into the loom, and then the cutting of his hair, mark the first, second, third, and fourth angel's message. And this seems to fit very well. But this is just one of the lines in this bigger line of Samson. So that means we're looking at a way mark that is the third angel arriving, and we zoom in, and we see this. And this is what we are really trying to show when we get to the camp meeting. What we have in an understanding of the lines in this series is how these lines are constructed. And often when we first start looking at a line like we did with Samson, because we have lots of these symbols in these different lines, that sometimes we put two lines together. That is where we start constructing a line and maybe the first angel's message, that part is good. But then when we take the second part, we start to try to fit it together. It doesn't quite fit. And that's because we're mixing two different lines. In our history, in this movement, we already had done that when we marked 9-11 as the empowerment of the first angel and also as being the arrival of the second. We had not recognized that we were looking at two different lines. That is, we one was more zoomed in than the other. And so this, this becomes, this is the insight. If there's any insight that we've received over the last year and a half in understanding the lines, it's that in our line, in our history, that we had mistakenly been zoomed in to a way mark, thinking that we were in a bigger line. This, this, is the revelation that I think helps this movement understand where they are in history. And so when we were looking at those 777 days and we were expecting to see the events of the Sunday law uh, arriving in our immediate time, this time that is now past, we were just zoomed in into a typical line. Now, to some degree, I understood that already. So I knew that Samuel Snow's history, Samuel Snow's line, was typical of the Millerite line. That Samuel Snow had these letters. His last letter before midnight is July 18. It's a symbol of October 22nd because October 22nd is the 187th day of the Jewish year. And when we had our disappointment of July 18, really we came to July 18, 1844 in the lines. That is, we hadn't arrived to midnight. And that's where this movement has been. And it's, it's taken us some time to unlearn uh, how we were looking at these lines. So now we know overall the movement, the American group and the Canadian group, the people who have not been studying with us don't know these things. And so we've made invitations to them to look at these things that we're studying. And for whatever reason, they've refused for the most part. There's the odd person here and there who occasionally glances at what we're doing. But for the most part, uh, they believe that what we are doing is either irrelevant or um, that we're on the wrong side of, of the issue. Now, the problem with that, from my perspective, is that 
uh, this is how the church has addressed us as a movement. Instead of looking at what we have presented, the 2520 or things like that, they have just made an assumption that we're divisive, we're causing problems, and they've just pushed us out and tried to ignore us. And of course that is to their own harm. And that's what I believe is happening in this movement at the present time. Now, the one thing that, you know, we also need to know as we look at this history, there's accusations being made. So we're going to look at this line. What I believe this line here is this line of Samson. This, remember, this is the arrival of the third angel's message in the whole line of Samson. Right. And the line of Samson uh, uh, in that third angel's message, we haven't marked where that is, but I do believe it's going to be uh January 11th, 2023, when we get to the whole line. And we know that January 11th, 2023 is Samson in the line of the judges. So Samson is the, is the way mark that really brings us to the present. It is the most important of these lines for us presently. And it speaks to this situation that has, has arisen in this movement at the present time and gives us light for our feet so that we can make good choices. <clears throat> so when we look at this line now, we see the 525 days that comes from a subtraction of the two different Hebrew uh, de- numbers, Strong's numbers for the Hebrew definition of Sorek. So that difference gives us this period of time. We say it's from July 18, 2020, to December 25th, 2021. When we went through the first part here, dealing with uh, the seven green widths, we took the verses, verse four, verse six, verse seven to nine, and we could see that these had uh, symbols relating to uh, FFA. So when FFA makes their declaration on December 6 2020 that's 16 verse 6 so that's just ffa in reverse 6 being f uh, 1 being a and then we had um this empowered uh i put the date in which uh, uh that 161 days that divides the 7 7 so it's another division of the 7 7 7 days 525 and 252, 616 and 161. And so 616 days after uh, November 9th, 2019, we had the end of that 10 days of prayer that is part of this structure. In there, we have three different periods of 187 days. We have one from uh, the Tennessean to December 25th, 2020, the bombing of Nashville. We have one from July 4th, the end of the 100 days of prayer, uh, to January 6th, um, 2021. And that's going to be the Siege of Washington. And then we have the 187 days from July 18th itself to um, uh, the sale of the School of the Prophets. And and I'm going to put that one in here. I'm just going to put it as 21. Uh, do that backwards. So we should do it as, so I put it there. So I'm going to do it as 21, 1, 21. Probably I could do it the other way. One, I don't know, I'll do it this way. 1, 21, 21. So you got 1, 2, 1, 2, 1. And that is going to be, uh, because Angela gave us that one. Um, And that's going to go here from July 18. So that's going to be the sale of the School of the Prophets. 187 days.
Okay, so you can see how this, this fits. <clears throat> so these, this is a lot of uh, coincidences if this is just something that happens by chance. So it's, it's not really possible that this is some, some coincidence. It is definitely a structure that has been provided uh, by God's hand. And so we need to accept it. So that, that finishes off that, that basic part. Now, what we have here is the second angel arrives October 2nd. Now, October, October 2nd is this confrontation that happens. We have Daniel Fontenot and Mark Johnson. It's going to be about transgenderism. Not transgenderism. Transhumanism, pardon me. So they're going to say that we're going to, the amalgamation that Ellen White talks about, is going to happen as a result of this vaccine, which is insane, right? I mean, one of the things that we need to understand about our DNA, our DNA contains other animal DNA and viruses. Every time humanity learns to overcome a, a virus, not every time, but many times, the DNA of that virus becomes part of our DNA. That is, we can look at the DNA of a person, and, and they're starting to be able to, to do this more clearly, and see that that, that DNA has been through a, uh, been exposed to a, a virus in the past. So DNA is not really what makes us who we are. There's a lot about DNA that we're learning. So DNA is much more flexible than, than we used to believe. That is, the choices we make, the environment that we are in, um, changes the DNA. So, and, and when I say changes, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't necessarily change it like physically, but it turns things on and off. So they call this... Um, epigenetics, something that they've been learning about. And so there's lots that we don't understand. But we know as Christians that who we are is based upon the choices that we make. We all have damaged bodies. We all have sinful human nature. We have a, a nature that has been corrupted through 6,000 years of sin. And to be worried about um, how our DNA might be changed when it's it's constantly being modified um, in various ways. And none of these things will make us something that we're not. And they won't make us uh, so that we are robots controlled by Satan. The choices, God gives us a free choice. And, and so to be fearful about these things that we have no control over to me, is, is just sensationalism. It's how all of the religions of the world control people. It's how the governments control people. And we don't want to be fearful of Satan's devices in the sense that we somehow believe that God cannot be victorious over them. We need to have our trust in God. And we need to be recognize the things we can control. We can't control other people. We can't control our environment. It doesn't mean that we needlessly and recklessly do things that are going to damage, damage us, things that are sinful. But we have to trust that we can take up vipers, poisonous vipers, and not be killed. We have to recognize that God has power over darkness. He has power over Satan. So... 
This is the conflict that happened on October 2nd. Now, it is, in a sense, an excuse because there was something else behind the scenes that was going on that I didn't understand. I still don't know. I just know that there was some kind of attitude or opinion or whatever gossip going on that uh, affected my relationship with Daniel Fontenot. And so somebody that I high re highly respect um, was suspicious of me from the beginning of that study prior to anything being said about uh, transhumanism. So that's on October 2nd, 2021. We're saying that this is the new ropes, whatever that means and how we understand this symbol. And then October 8th, I'm going to get a letter from Steve Welk that says I'm unwelcome to present again. So on October 9th, I was due to present. They had some kind of meeting between certain people. They decided Theodore is not going to present. How that meeting came about, who was involved, what their reasoning was, who, who was behind it, doesn't matter to me. The point is on October 8th, which we know is a symbolic date, it's October, oct, can refer to eight, it's eight, eight. And so on October 8th, we have this letter that came to me by email saying, I'm not welcome to present again. So the series that I was doing on the book of Hebrews, that's going to be canceled. That's going to have to be moved. Um, we move it to a Sunday so that we don't interfere with their studies. I believe that's what we did. Now, October 22nd, 2021, I publish this paper on uh, the amalgamation and the mRNA vaccine, right? So basically showing uh, the evidences from the spirit of prophecy, what she says uh, regarding amalgamation, how this is unrelated uh, to these ideas that were being presented, um, uh, that this is not what Ellen White is talking about, uh, because the suggestion that somehow if if somebody happens to get vaccinated, that they've received either the mark of the beast or their DNA is going to be changed to the point that they're now going to be the property of the pharmaceutical companies. Uh, these things we would have to discount as um, really baseless theories that have no place in uh, the gospel. They're not they're not relevant to our salvation. Now, we all know what we think about vaccines, um, and not just MNR, mRNA vaccines. Um, so, but those things are not salvational. It's not a Sunday law test. It's not that somebody who received the vaccine is going to be lost, right? That, that idea, um, should be dismissed from our minds, right? Doesn't mean that things are safe, right? Doesn't mean that's something that we should do, but we need to recognize that um, these are not in, in that direct way issues of salvation. Now, October 8th, uh, 2021 is the first day of the seventh month. So it's also the Feast of Trumpets. So, um, so Dwight just noted that there. And this date has come up uh, several times in um, uh, uh, this, this, this Feast of Trumpets date. Um, so, yeah, so October 8th is the first day of the seventh month in 2021. And, and we have this October 8th is also... Um, the first, the tenth day of the seventh month in 2030, right? So, so October to eighth has lined up in different way marks, in different ways, as well as uh, the first day of the seventh month has lined up. So we have this first day of the seventh month, we have the tenth day of the seventh month, we have Passover, we have the first day of the first month. All of these different dates, Pentecost, they have lined up within our lines in various lines in different ways. So that's what I mark as. The arrival is that confrontation in this meeting. 
October 8th is the formalization that is it's put into writing and sent to me. And then this is empowered when I respond with the paper on October 22, um, uh, transhumanism amalgamation and the mRNA vaccine. And that can be seen on my academia site. And we're saying that that's the, the new ropes, right? So when we look at the green widths and the new ropes, uh, the sum, so that's the gematria of green widths is 193. And we can see that's 391 in reverse. So I thought that was interesting. Then when I looked at the new ropes, the sum was 115. Now in reverse, that's 511. So I don't know what 511 means. It could be you know, the five virgins, the 11 is a symbol or something. But what I noticed is if I added together 391 and 511, I get 902. And 902 is the 20th day of the ninth month in reverse, right? So you just take 902 reverse it and it's 209, 20th day of the ninth month, which is the end of that 525 days. So what I've seen here is that we can take these symbols, the way that we've done these symbols and we can construct this line. And this is a zoom into the line of Samson, the bigger line of Samson, the arrival of the third angel's message, which is January 11th, 2023. And when we zoom in, we get this line that addresses this latter part of um, uh, the 7-7-7 seven, seven, seven structure. And it gives us this um, this really neat little picture of, of what was happening in that history. And so we can see that the darkness here now, we still got that wife is barren thing that we have to get rid of. Um, so the darkness here now, we know that this has to do with the Philistine oppression. Um, so that's literally what's, what's described. Um, but when we look at these events of Samson, these are um, these enticements of Delilah to Samson. And where we're having trouble is we have this moral aspect of Samson um, that is ironic. Now, Samson is a type of Christ. In the context of this message, uh, this is sunshine or this is light. So we're in darkness. Samson represents light, even though he's morally ironic. And um, we're going to see that we have all these symbols of, of midnight, attached to Samson. So, you know, when we start to, to look at Samson and Delilah, the Samson and Delilah part uh, is not the main mid midnight line. That is, it's going to be um, the second angel arriving and the second angel, angel empowered. And, and uh, so the empowering one is going to be the story before the Samson and Delilah. So we're going to look at that in a minute. So, so if we're looking at this line, this is the third angel arriving in that lot, whole line of Samson. And we have this 525 days to December 25th, 2021. We have these three tests, the green widths, the new ropes, the seven locks in the loom, which we still have to address. And we still haven't placed the verses here. Um, and then finally, the fourth, when he gets his hair cut. So that's the fourth angel arriving. So we just got to finish that part of this up. But in order to understand this line, we still need to know what this darkness is. Now, this darkness is in regard to um, something that relates to July 18, because July 18 is going to be this first message arrives. And we know that this first part is, it's going to be answered by um, um, these, these symbols, symbolic time. So we know that symbolic time is this issue. And in order to receive the second message, you have to receive the first. 
So now when we get to October 2nd, we have a group of people that has not have not studied the first message. They've not listened to it. So they're going to reject what we're having to say. They have reasons for it, but it's going to be over this issue of transhumanism um, and DNA and all that kind of stuff and amalgamation. Now, this has to do with what we could say it deals with conspiracy theories. Now, we all know that conspiracies exist. Um, when we say something's a conspiracy theory, I mean, there's lots of reasons for people to be very distrustful of the media, to be very distrustful of, of any governmental source of information. Part of the problem that we have, though, is that we seem to be very trustful of information that has never demonstrated itself to be trustful. That is, it's fine to be distrustful of the government, of the media, of you know mainstream media, but shouldn't we also be distrustful of every source of information that we get that doesn't come directly from God's word? If we read something on the internet, we watch a video and we just accept what it's saying, that it's representing something that's true. That's interesting there, Angela noticed that the the one the, the fifth the one one five or the five five one can be scrambled to one five one, which is the number of years between 1863 and 2014. And, and 1798 to 1849. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Follow the Pope to the death of William Miller. Would you understand what I'm saying about sources of information? There's lots of things that could be true that we hear on the internet. You know, as Abraham Lincoln said, uh, you, you never trust anything on Facebook, right? Which I've seen on Facebook. So we know that sources of information, especially misinformation, becomes multiplied. The more sensational it, something is, uh, the more it replicates in social media. And, you know, I've seen videos of showing crystallization happening, which is obviously crystallization, and people claiming that this is uh, self-assembling nanorobots or something like that. And it's pretty obvious that that's not what it is. And you start doing some research, uh, and I know a little bit about nanotechnology because I studied uh, James Tour. He is a, uh, a Christian. He's a Messianic Christian, Jewish, who, um, yeah, so Dwight says not, that's 51 years, not 151, from 1798 to the death of Miller. Anyway, um, so I've studied the works of James Tour. Um, and, and he's the leading expert in the world in nanotechnology. So, you know, nanotechnology is not what you see in this video that shows crystallization that claims to be something about the vaccine doing self-assembling uh, nanotechnology. That's just not how it works. So, but anyway, we believe things, right? And the question is, shouldn't we be suspicious of everything because one of the things that say satan's devices is uh to create conspiracy theories to discredit the truth so this has always been done um so people believe the truth but then they also believe things that are clearly not true and that discredits what they're saying that is true and so we need to be we need to have a sincere, that is an undefiled, a pure truth, which has to be founded upon God's word. And not just things that are uh, seen in the world. They may seem to agree with God's word on the surface, but if they're not true, it doesn't matter that they agree with our ideas and understanding of things. They have to be true.
So everything that is true, that's what we should follow. And this, I believe, is the next conflict that has occurred in this movement. From October 2nd, this situation up to December 25th, 2021, uh, we have an opportunity in this movement to have a pure faith. We could look at these things correctly, but instead we, we long for the sensational. And the problem with the sensational is it appeals to our human nature. It appeals to our sense of uh, pride, that we are better than other people. That somehow we know some special truth or some understanding, um, and that makes us better. When we come in confrontation with the truth, it shows us that we are sinners. We don't see ourselves as better than we are. We don't see ourselves as better than others. That's the power of the truth. It's not sensational. It's convicting. It's a very different type of truth. So let's let's just look at these uh, verses then. So let's go over here. So when we get to the new ropes, um, this is going to be um, in verse uh, yeah, this is going to be verse ten and eleven and and twelve. Now we're going to have in this story. It's going to be first. We have a verse that says, "You didn't tell me the truth." Then we have a verse where Samson says, well, um, he, he lies to her again. He says, well, new ropes, if they bind me fast with new ropes uh, that were never occupied, right? We were looking at that last time, that they were never employed, right? Then I shall be weak. And then, and then we have a verse that says that Delilah does this. She, uh, she binds him and then, you know, he escapes. Right. So we're going to have that happen in um, uh, here, six, seven, eight, and then nine. So this one's going to be, tell me the truth. He lies to her. In this one, the Lord of the Philistines uh, brought up to her seven green widths. She binds him with them. And then they're going to be, uh, that's, so that's going to be four verses. So you've got these four verses that give uh, the seven green widths. You're going to have the three verses that give you the two ropes. And then you're going to have, um, again, she's going to, in this one, they put it in one verse uh, where she says, you mocked me. So this is another mocking. And he tells her, if you weave my seven locks of my head with the web, um, then I'll be weakened, right? And uh, then she's going to do this, right? So she's going to weave his hair with the pin and beam and with the web, the pin of the beam and with the web, right? So, so that one's just going to be two verses. Right. So you went from four to three to two. Right. And then here we're going to have this final one. So she's going to she's going to mention the three times. Right. Um, so she presses him daily with her words and urged him so that his soul was vexed unto death. And then he's going to pour out his heart and he's going to say the truth this time. And it's interesting in 1618, when Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart. Now, so Delilah can see it this time. She knows this time it is the truth. And what is this verse? It's the golden ratio, as Arana says. It's the Fibonacci, or not the, yeah, the Fibonacci number, right? Um, is that what it's called? 
this is this this golden ratio. Uh, it's 1.618 here at 16.18, but it's that ratio. We know we have that in um, uh, uh, in relationship uh, to the verse dealing with Peter. So that's um, what is it? Um, can't remember which one it is. It was it Mark, was it? Matthew. Matthew. Matthew eight uh eight um, 18 verse 16? 16 verse 18. 16 verse, yeah, that's there. Okay. Right. And this is going to be where G, uh, Mark, uh, Peter confesses Jesus as the Christ. Right. And this is where he says, um, and I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So that's Matthew 16, 18. So now why is this uh, important? Well, there's a number of things about this verse. Uh, we know that uh, the gates of hell, where are they located? Panium. Yeah, Panium, right? And then um, also if we take the name of Peter, so that's just the English gematria of Peter. Is that what it is? How does that work? Yes. So if we take, yeah, we take uh, Peter and um, the normal product is going to be 144,000 of the name Peter, right? So he becomes a type here. And, and so we've related in our, our message uh, addressing in this um, uh, paneum, right? This way mark in our lines. So people had noticed, of course, that the normal product of Peter is 144,000 before, you know, before we even had Paneum, but we never understood that the gates of hell uh, are Paneum, right? Because we didn't look for that because we didn't know about Paneum. Uh, in it. And it's going to be, of course, uh, the location there is Caesarea Philippi, right, where, um, where he's located, Right, so Caesarea Philippi, you can see here. So that's going to be Banium, sometimes it's called, or Panium or Panium. <clears throat> okay, so we have uh, these types of things that we uh, we look at when we look at the Book of Judges. We can look at the verse sixteen, verse eighteen, and. Uh, that's when she saw that he had told her all his heart. And then she called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up this once, for he hath showed me all his heart. Then the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and brought money in their hand. So this money, this 11,000, uh, 1,100, pardon me, pieces of silver, they're going to bring uh, to Delilah here at this time. They didn't bring it the other three times. Or at least it's not mentioned that they did. But this time they bring it, at least it's mentioned. Um, so this story becomes a little more involved, right? She made him sleep upon her knees and she called for a man and she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head and she began to afflict him and his strength went from him. And she said, Phil the Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as other times. Before Now, we notice that this is doubled, this other times, and it has uh, the Hebrew number 6471. And we know 6174 is this number of um, Capricar's uh, constant. And, and we had uh, an iteration of this number 7641 when we were dealing with, um, I always forget, is that Jephthah? That we had the seven six four one. 
because that was going to be the number for uh, the shibboleth, right? So Jeff, Jeff that was 3316, if I remember correctly. And, and then you add the two together, you get 30 years. It's 10,957 days. <clears throat> so this being doubled here is, is interesting in and of itself, but that it's this these four digits that come from Capricar's constant is also interesting. So the doubling helps bring our attention to it and, and to see the significance of it. And... Um, Right. And then there's, you know, the Philistines are going to put out his eyes and bind him with fetters of brass to grind in the prison house. So he's going to be grinding wheat. Be it the hair of his head began to grow again after he was shaven. So this hair, um, 8181, you can see that there, hopefully at the bottom, there's the Hebrew number for hair, 8181. So again, this relates to Samson. So his hair is, of course, one of the main characteristics of Samson that we know about. And um, so that becomes uh, significant. So we can take these verses. Um, so we're going to say that these verses here are all going to be from... Uh, you know, basically 15 to 22. So it's chapter 16, verse 15 to 22 is going to be uh, this, um, this story. But the main one we're going to look at is 16, verse 18. So these just become the pivotal verses, right? 16, 18, 16, 12, 16, 8. So, so obviously we have all of these other parts of this story. Well, pardon me, I'm putting this in the wrong spot. This goes over here. Hey, haircut, 16, 18. And, and then this one, it's going to be um, 16, 16. I believe is the verse that we look at. Um, the main verse. Mm. Nope, it's not sixteen sixteen. It's going to be it's going to be sixteen thirteen. Pardon me. 16.13 is the main verse. But it's going to be that story, right? That's just where the, the weaving loom is mentioned. Now, there was lots of symbols that we looked at in this. Um, we know that uh, the pin and the beam, they represent the, the line upon line. So this, this tapestry that's being woven, uh, the seven locks represent the seven way marks in a line. So these are woven into this line. Um, and there are so many things that we looked at. You know, we're not going to be able to address, when I do these presentations, every single detail of things that we've studied. Uh, but there are some primary uh, ideas that we need to present to people. Now, when Stephen gets here, uh, we have a lot of work to do. So um, we're not going to be you know, obviously having the morning studies because this is the last morning study. And I have stuff to get ready uh, before Stephen gets here uh, tomorrow. Um, but anyway, the point that I'm trying to make is that uh, we have a lot of information and, and we have to figure out how to take this information and put it into a package that's easily accessible for somebody uh, who's at least familiar with this movement uh, to see it. And mainly, even though we know that uh, these meetings are being boycotted by some, we have to believe that there are going to be some who are going to watch the meetings um, 
it's obviously a little easier to watch these shorter presentations because they're going to be one hour presentations instead of an hour and a half study. And things are going to be a little more interactive, hopefully with people there discussing. Uh, it'll be a little easier. And um, uh, we're going to try to put things into, uh, into a package so that people can watch the whole, the whole camp meeting and, and really get a sense of what it is that we've, we've done here with these lines. So that's going to be, this is the line of Samson and Delilah, right? That's, that's the line that's here. And some very interesting symbols. So now we want to just finish this off um, in placing these verses of Samson. So we're saying that Samson has, well, uh, we'll do it this way. Um, I don't know if that's how I was doing it before, but I'm going to try to do this now. Just wonder if this. So we're going to have the death of Samson. Now, I think the death of Samson is either the third angel arriving or it's the fourth angel arriving. I'm going to put it there. And, and then we're going to have the story of... So I don't know yet how, how we're laying this out. So we're going to look at this. So we have Samson and Delilah. Um, so this is either, so we might move these over. That's all I'm trying to say. Oops. So Samson and Talila. Then we would have, um, Samson and the harlot. So we just put harlot. Then we're going to have uh, a few other issues here. So if we go, so let's go back to to these verses. You know, I'm jumping around here. Uh, so I'm going to start at the beginning. So we have the birth of Samson, but it doesn't start really with the birth of Samson. It starts with the story of Manoah. And so we're saying the story of Manoah is going to be the beginning of this line of Samson. Now, um, I don't think we can divide the story of Manoah into two way marks, but maybe we can. Um, so we have the story of Manoah, and then we have the birth of Samson. So maybe that's the two way marks there. And then we have Samson's marriage. So we have the marriage itself. So, so far, so far we got Manoah, the birth of Samson, Samson's marriage. And um, so, uh, and so I don't know if we can divide this into anything uh, other than one line. Um, I mean, we have the riddle. We, we could have the first part. And then we could have the riddle as two different things. So I don't know if we want to divide that up. We have to decide that. Um, and then we have Samson defeating the Philistines. And then we have the story of the harlot, then Samson and Delilah, and then the death of Samson. Right. So. So I don't know whether we take the story of Manoah as all being the first. You understand what I'm saying? We have these different sections and these different sections are going to be on a line. So well, one thing we know for certain, we're going to put Manoah over here. Whether that is... Um, so let's, let's, okay, let's do it this way. So we got Manoah, we have, um, what's, what's the next story? 
We could put the birth of Samson as one. We'll, we'll just see what we do here. We could say the story of Manoah is the birth of Samson. So, oops. Okay. So with the birth of Samson, we have the marriage. And then you have the feast itself, right? I mean, I don't know how we would... Um, and then you're going to have him defeat the Philistines. But you, do you understand the problem we're having here? There's lots of details in this story. So how would we decide where we're going to um, make these divisions? So they're going to have in chapter 15, um, the first one in chapter 15 is going to be um, this part of the story where he comes to his wife and so that, okay, we'll call this the slaying of, how many does he kill? How many? 30, right? So you're going to have, um, so whether that's going to be a separate thing. Yeah, so he's going to kill the 30, and then he's also going to have, um, So he slays 30 Philistines. So that would be separate from the mes message. Um, and then he's in chapter 15. He's going to have... Um, He's going to slay a thousand men, but how do we divide chapter 15? So you have the 300 foxes. That's, that's the main other line. So, um, three hundred foxes, and then you're going to have. you know, do we put the, when he's captured, and then you're going to have, of course, um, the fall of the temple. How would we characterize that? So you can start to see, we, we could break this up into quite a few chunks. Um so we're going to have, well, that's going to be the death of Samson. Um, and what even about this story where he uh, is thirsty, right? So I don't know, right? We got lots of these lines, these stories. Now, I don't know in the Hebrew text, like if I look at Hebrew, um, I don't know if this one gives me the paragraph markings or not. I don't think this one does. The Hebrew text here. Um, so this one breaks it up. He defeats the Philistines. Samson's marriage. That's the Samson. Right, so they, they don't give us here in, in the King James um, or in the Hebrew Bible, the Esau, they don't give us all of these natural divisions that occur. Um, oops. Okay, let's go here, stay on. So how would we lay these out? I mean, we could say the Manoah is the birth of Samson. 
the marriage, does it have two different divisions of it? Um, right, so you put the birth of Samson here, you have the marriage. And, and when we look at these way marks, we'd have to say, you know, where do these fit? Uh, 300 foxes, this is going to be, you know, I'm putting this here. Um, this, this is where he slays a thousand men. There you have the harlot. Then you have Samson, Delilah. And then you have the death of Samson. So, you know, we would have to look at which each of these verses are. Is this making sense? That we can take this line of Samson and place it in this way. And if we say that the birth of Samson is the arrival of the first message, how is the marriage uh, a formalization of that? Um, now, why was Samson born? So here, we'll do it this way. So the birth of Samson contains Manoah, but we'll just um, we'll take that out, even though we have a line of Manoah, which is zoomed into the birth of Samson. But what's the purpose of Samson? Why is Samson born? He's raised up to bring a measure of deliverance from the Philistines. Okay, so he's he's raised up to be a judge, right? To overcome the Philistines, right? And I didn't catch everything you said there, Stephen. So is that basically what you said? Well, I said a measure of deliverance. A measure, okay. Is that that's what the the Bible tells us? Measure. Not exactly in them words, but. but what is it? How does it describe it? Is there something that that the Bible says um, that he begins to deliver? Ah, okay, begins to deliver. Okay, yeah, I knew there was something. But, uh, so we're going to have here, I'm just going to do it this way. So Samson comes, and, and the idea of Samson, not saying that, you know, the birth of Samson, obviously, he begins to deliver them. Um, so I'm not saying that his birth is just means he begins, but it that's why Samson is born. That's the, his purpose. Maybe I'll put here purpose. Purpose begin to deliver Israel. So if that's the case, uh, what is there about the marriage that is a formalization of this? It was from God that Samson would have some contact with the Philistines. Okay, and that's in verse, uh, um, yeah, so it's God's purpose. That's 14.4, uh, right? Um, so this marriage, um, so we'll just put Judges 14.4 there in the chart so people can read it. But you can see how the marriage then uh, helps fulfill that purpose. It helps formalize it. Right? Right? 
We also have a symbol of 144,000 there. Now, maybe instead of the slain of the Philistines, we, we can put here the riddle. Um, as this empowerment. So what is there particularly about the riddle? So we know it, there's the 30, 30, 30, right? But we haven't put dates for any of these, these things yet, right? So we just, we're just putting these verses, we're laying them out on a line. We haven't said what, what events they're marking in our history. Just taking the story and laying it out. So we have the 30, 30, 30 that's in that riddle. Okay. And then the 300 foxes, these are going to relate to um, his anger. when he comes and visits his wife. Yeah. So he catches 300 foxes. Now, we would... Um... Now, in this story, one of the symbols that we noted was, um, we're just going to say uh, 15 verse 1, right? So that's a symbol. 15 verse 1 is... And, and we're going to say that this line of Samson, one thing we know about the line of Samson is, is it begins in 1989 and it's going to go to 2023 and maybe even 2030, right? Because <clears throat> it's, it's reiterating our history, even though it's the third angel arriving, even though it's January 11th, 2023, on that line of the judges above, it's going to cover the whole history, not just even 9-11, it's going to go back to 1989. It's going to start with the first November 11th. Then at least that's what I understand it to be. And it's going to cover this whole history. So November 11th to 9-11. Um, so again, we're going to figure out where these way marks go. So the 300 foxes, um, is in this story from chapter 15, verse 1. Um, Do you not mean November 9? Yeah, did I say, what did I say, November 11th? Yeah. Yeah, I know, I do that all the time. Uh, November 9th. <laughs> um, so, so back to November 9th all the way uh, to September 11th, and then to November 9th, 2019. So then we have the 300 foxes. In this story, it starts chapter 15, verse 1. So the main thing that I see here in this story is we had this harvest. It's the time of the wheat harvest. And 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 what we can say about this is that we, can, we know that each of these waymarks, that we can take those stories and we can draw a line in and of themselves. Right. So there can be a line that addresses this story of Samson uh, coming and wanting to to go into his wife into the chamber. Right. So he wants to go be with his wife. And of course, she's been given to someone else. <clears throat> so you can see there's there there's so much here in this line that. We could we could spend the entire week of the camp meeting just studying Samson because it would reiterate all of the other histories. So then we have the thousand men. So we have the 300 foxes, then we have the thousand men. So um, so this is going to be. Um, so the, the foxes, that whole story ends. And then because of that, um, there's going to be uh, this story where the 3,000 uh, Ephraimites are going to come, or men of Judah, pardon me, the men of Judah are going to come onto the top of the rock at Etam. And they're going to uh, 
capture Samson and deliver him to the Philistines. And then he's going to take this jawbone of an ass and kill a thousand men with it. <clears throat> so that in itself can be a line. We could take that whole story of this uh, encounter and, and, and draw it in a line itself, right? Now we've used it as parts of different lines, but I think with Samson, I think the best thing that we could do if we were going to complete Samson would be to look at these way marks that we've marked out here and then draw the line for that story. So that story of him killing a thousand men, uh, the jawbone of an ass is uh, a symbol there. Oops, put that in the wrong spot. Sorry. This here. Now, there was lots of symbols that we, we looked at that, you know, Hebrew numbers uh, of definitions of words. And we've looked at the symbol of a thousand. We look at the symbol of Lehi. Um, all the symbols there are dealing with Islam. And then we have... Uh, The story of the harlot, the marriage to the harlot. And that story, even though it's brief, um, the symbols here are going to be addressed specifically um, that we have the gate of the city um, that he's going to carry with the two posts. And he carries them bar and all puts them upon his shoulders and brings them to the top of the hill that is before Hebron. Right. So there's going to be three verses involved in that story. And one of the primary things about that story is 16 verse one. So, um, so we got this 15 verse one over here, but here we're going to have uh, 16 verse one. 16 verse 1, we know it's the wave offering. Um, and here we have this story of the harlot in 16.1, and we connected that to Colin's presentation. Now, the foxes going back here, got rid of 300 there. Uh, the 300 foxes, <clears throat> uh, because this is in... Uh, the time of wheat harvest. And of course, that's why it's the time of wheat harvest when he's going to take these 300 foxes, tie them tail to tail with the firebrands between them and send them into the fields, right? So it's the time of wheat harvest. It's a, a pretty bad time to do that. Obviously, it's a good time if you want to burn down their fields. Bad time for them. Um, but we connected this to uh, the period of time, the seven weeks after Colin's presentation. So these are uh, out of order, right? But the 300 foxes deals with um, this, this second angel's message arriving. So, so here we have, have this line now. Now, where do we place these dates, these events? What are the symbols uh, that we would use? So, I mean, I could arbitrarily just go through here and, and just bun throw in a bunch of years. Um, 
So whether the death of Samson goes to 2023 or whether it goes to 2030, whether the story of Samson and Delilah, which we believe actually relates to our direct history, we know that this would be in 2023. So if we're going to take a date, I mean, I would just do this. Oops. There we go. So you got January 11th, 2023. And so you can see how the judges line, whether we would put this date or some other date, I'm just gonna put it here for now. Um, maybe there's some other date that's the fourth angel arriving in this whole line of Samson, I don't know. But you can see, I'm gonna bring it, Samson and Delilah, we can see that that's a zoom into January 11th, 2023. The birth of Samson, so we did this in the line of Manoah, uh, wherever it is, here it is. <clears throat> uh, no, that's not it, here it is. So we started with uh, November 9th, 1989. So we use the line of Manoah because of all the symbols there to start it at November 9th, 1989. So, so I would take um, take this date here and this is where we're going to start this line of Samson it's going to start in November 9th 1989 its purpose is to begin to deliver Israel and so this is what's going to happen with the birth of Samson we have this marriage so if we're gonna put a formalization, so we have to think about this. We need a formalization of this, mess, of this message. And, and then we're gonna have this uh, empowered, right? So one of the things we looked at the 30, 30, 30 is it brings us to the 252 and the 525. Then we have the 300 foxes. We have to decide where that would be in our history, okay? So the 300 foxes, we have a symbol there of, as we said, it had to do with uh, Odilia's presentation. Uh, that's how we had addressed that. And then we had a thousand men with the jawbone of an ass. What, what date does that bring in our line? And then we have the harlot. So the story of the harlot, again, you know, that's going to be the first fruit symbol. So that's where he's going to be. That's going to be midnight or the midnight, uh, the midnight cry, the symbols of midnight. So that's where he is in Gaza, sees there a harlot, right? The Gazites hear that Samson is there. They compass the city, but nighttime, he's gonna take uh, the gate of the city and transport it. Um, so he waits till midnight and arose at midnight. So arising at midnight, Remember, Samson is a type of Christ. So at midnight, he takes the doors of the gate of the city and the two posts, right? So there's this doubling, right? These two way marks and went away with them bar and all and put them upon his shoulder and carried them to the top of a hill that is before he. So if we looked at Millerite history and we're going to place this story in Millerite history, uh, would we place it at Boston and also Exeter? Or would we just place it at Boston? Or where, where would we place it? You understand what I'm saying here? So if we look at this script. We would need to place it at Boston, but it would be interesting to place it at both. Okay, so one of the things we know about Adventist history that Adventists don't know 
is they know about Exeter, right? I mean, if they know anything about Millerite history and, and they watched the Midnight Cry movie with, uh, um, you know, a few people standing around in some trees uh, when the Exeter camp meeting happened. So instead of 5,000 people, they got a dozen or so. Um, that's when I stopped watching the movie. It annoyed me too much. I know they didn't have a huge budget, but um, uh, Adventists know at least that there's this thing called the Exeter camp meeting. They know there was a midnight cry. If, if they know at all about the midnight cry, they place it at Exeter. But Ellen White places it midway, right? And part of the problem in my paper on the midnight cry, um, I clearly show that Loughborough uh, conflates the story of Boston and Exeter. That is, he believes Exeter was in July, not in August. And so the story of, of him riding up on a horse occurs at Boston, not at Exeter. But uh, what happens at Exeter when these presentations are given, because we got the eyewitness, James White, those are all mixed together. So, so the story of him riding up on a horse, that's not Exeter, that's Boston. And so this is something we know. We know that there is these two events, Boston and Exeter, July 21st, 1844, the fifth day of the fourth month, and August 15th, 1844, at Exeter, the first day of the fifth month. So we know something that they don't. Now, if we think about this midnight, midnight cry, and we try to understand this in these lines. Uh, the one thing I can sort of say about this. So we have these two way marks. So when we look at this chart here. So we, we don't know. We, we haven't placed all these dates here, what these different things are. But, I mean, they're going to be their main way marks in that history. We're going to have 9-11. We're going to have 11-9. We're going to have July 18th. We're going to have December 25th, 2021, somewhere in there. Um, but in the line of Samson, there is this line where we have a thing called midnight and the midnight cry. We have midnight arrive here. Right. Second angel arrives. The symbol is there is Odilia's presentation. Um, this thousand men being slain with the jawbone of an ass. That's going to be um, the next part of this story. So this is chapter 15 here. Right. So this is going to be chapter 15 as well. And and then we have chapter 16. So this would be Colin's presentation. So this would be December 25th, 2021. And this would be February 12th, uh, 2022, right? So they would they would be inverted. And I don't know how we address that. Um, But in our history, it has to be that some way we have this, uh, you know, if we're going to look at uh, Colin's presentation, uh, there's there's some other way in which we have to understand this. That's all I'm trying to say, that we have these two way marks. Um, 300 foxes, the thousand men, and the harvest. So three way marks for the second angel's message. And I don't know how to date them at this point. Um we know the riddle relates to July 18, 2020. So, um, so let's do it this way. So we're not really having uh, September 11th in this line. We're just going to do this because I just want to finish this off. We're going to say that that's that, right? We're going to take this date. And we're going to put this date here. That's the riddle. Um, the second angel arrives. 
in this in this history in this line we haven't defined exactly how this darkness works and how this message works uh, but we can see that the, these symbols uh, address those the 300 foxes is there is there some way we can place the 300 um, that we had been doing I can't remember uh, If we're going to place it as the second angel arriving, what does that 300 symbol refer to? In Millerite history, you had the 300 charts come to their, the end of their usefulness. Okay. At the beginning of the arrival of the second angel. Okay, so would we just place that then as December 25th, 2021? Is that where we would? So how could we relate that then to placing the second angel arriving in our history in this line of Samson? Because what we've done here is, I mean, we, we've covered this, this whole history, 1989 to 2019, is just that birth of Samson, and then the, the formalization of that message is, is November 9th. So November 9th to November 9th. We know that's going to be a period of 30 years. Um, and so other lines are going to tell us more detail about that. So when we get the 300 foxes, though, as you're saying, this relates to the charts. So can we give a date for that in our lines. So the 300 foxes, it relates to the Millerite charts. It relates to the grain, which is the doctrine. Um, you know, if we put December 25th there, what's the formalization? Right. You see what I'm saying? So our time is up. So we didn't really finish this line, but we're going to finish it at the camp meeting. Maybe before then. Now, Stephen, I just, you know, we're recording this still, but I'm asking you a question regarding what I sent you dealing with the chronology of the judges. Did that make any sense? There's some okay. things that I read that I don't see where he gets his logic from. He did make some things which I disagree with. Yeah, okay. But could we put that 80 years, um, the main part of that 80 years? I know there's lots we have to we have to deal with in that chronology. But the main one is that 80 years of peace. Is it possible to overlap them in that way? I had the idea that it could be connected as an accumulative time. Right. Now, normally, normally you take Ehud, Yad, okay, there was a time of peace for 80 years with Ehud. But um, you could maybe see it as accumulative and that it also includes the time of peace under Othniel. Okay, that's an idea as well. So we're going to have to discuss those things. So the point is we have a lot of things that are unfinished. We have some of the chronology that's unfinished. We have some of these lines that are unfinished. And we have to bring these all together. Stephen and I have to create notes. So we're going to be getting up at four every morning, at least I am. And um, you're going to, we're going to have a lot of work in the morning before we have breakfast. So we're going to have a pretty rigid schedule of things that we have to do um, in getting the notes ready uh, for the camp meeting and hammering out some of this stuff. And some of our discussions are going to happen while we're doing other things. But uh, Steve and I are going to be working on the papers. So, so there's going to be a lot of work, Stephen. Sounds good. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And, uh, 
so then when we get to the camp meeting, we should have some of these things sorted out. Uh, but there still will be things that we we discover as we present. And, and we're praying for the Holy Spirit to do a work upon our hearts that a work of conversion can happen. We're praying for the movement. Even if people aren't there at the camp meeting, that the Holy Spirit can lead them to watch the videos and, uh, and that God's spirit can prevail, that it's not going to be man's spirit, that it's going to be God leading, and that the errors that we have in our understanding, the errors we have in our characters will be removed. So that's what we're praying for. And so we're praying that uh, those that can make it here um, will be blessed. And uh, I know there's people in Africa. There's Brother Samuel Cato, or I think that's how you say his last name. Uh, do you have any update on whether you guys are going to be able to be here? Um, surely we don't know. Because we, we see time is running out. Yeah. And um, they have not asked for our passports. The passports take two weeks to take to Nairobi from Kampala. Oh, yeah. And then back to the embassy. But we have not got any responses yet. Zero responses, eh? So, no, most probably. Yeah. We can get them after the camp meeting, surely. So you wouldn't be able to make it to the camp meeting. So that is what we are hoping because of the time it takes 14 days uh, to put in a visa after they have given you a response. Hmm? Okay. To take your passports. But uh, in case it doesn't happen that way, uh, we, we are going to arrange uh, somewhere, since I'm in Kenya already, Yeah, I'll be with the Palmoni in Nairobi, watching the videos every day. Okay. And then Patrick will be gathering with the Ugandan people. Okay. Um, such that uh, we, we can catch up with the, the studies in case we do not come. Mm. Okay. Yes, okay. yes. So keep me updated on what's happening because, you know, I have okay. plans that we have to make here as far as accommodations for, for who's ever going to be here. But nobody's okay. got any notification for their passport, you're saying? Surely. Mm. Yeah. Okay. We shall let you know. Well, God, God is in everything. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I, I, sure. I never worry about anything. Uh, that no, no. Of God. Mm. Surely. <laughs> Surely, yeah. But I mean, it'd be really nice to have you here if, if you guys can make it. But if you can't, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. So, so let's uh, close with prayer. <clears throat> Dear Father in heaven, uh, we're very thankful, Lord, uh, for the time that we have had to study here uh, this morning. We just ask, Lord, for your spirit uh, to continue to work upon our hearts. Uh, I pray that uh, those that you wish to be here will be here. But we know, Lord, what your purposes are. Uh, will always be uh, uh, to show us our need of you and our dependence upon you. We pray for each person who's been studying these truths, and we ask, Lord, that these truths can multiply and that they can spread and that the work that we have begun here will continue unto the day of Jesus Christ. Continue um, to help us in our plans for the camp meeting, in our writing out of the notes, and we pray this and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.